Hello everybody and welcome to This Week in Astrology with your friend Gretchen Heidel, full-time astrologer, life coach, Reiki master, and so much more. I am here live tonight on Facebook and also co-recording for YouTube, so if you see me looking up and down, that is why, uh, on October 9th, 2023, going over This Week in Astrology all the way up until October 15th of 2023. So welcome, welcome. If you're just joining me live tonight, go ahead and post below in your astrological sign. If you're just joining me on YouTube, same for you as well. It helps me in the algorithm if you post below your astrological sign, uh, your sun sign, rising moon, if you know it. And where are you tuning in from? What area of the world? Uh, you don't have to give specifics, but you know, just the general location, because uh, I love to hear where everybody's tuning in from. We have another extremely busy week astrologically. These first two weeks of October are unbelievably busy, astrologically speaking. And it's not letting up this week either, the second week of, of October. Um, we still have a lot of uh, busy energies. Uh, there's it, and, and it's not like super fun energy. There's a little bit of a contention, obviously, going on in the world. Hello, Kelly. Leo from New York. Welcome, welcome. <laughs> um, and so we have a lot of planets uh, doing a bunch of different things. I'm going to be going over what that means and um, how you can sort of have this in your life. And obviously, there's all kinds of stuff going on uh, in the world right now. So um, welcome. If you're just joining, go ahead and please post below. Make sure you like the broadcast. That gets it um rolling in the algorithm and I love to see everybody joining live. This is wonderful. Okay, so we have uh, Venus, Lilith, and Saturn. Oh my, they're all together doing some stuff. So I'm going to be going over that. Um, also, Pluto is turning direct in Capricorn. That's a big deal. Then we have Mars moving into Scorpio, and that's another big deal. And then we have a total, um, sorry, it's a ring of fire eclipse. So this is a big, huge deal. I should have put that on my on the uh, show notes there. I will after the fact, but um, we have the eclipse coming as well. And that's going to be a big new moon, solar eclipse, and everything you need to know. Yay, Kelly, uh, another Kelly, <laughs> different Kelly, Gemini from New York as well. Um, Wendy Scorpio from Vermont. Amir, hello. Taurus, uh, welcome, Vermont. Um, Holly, Hello, Holly. Uh, Libra Sun. Love that from Vermont. Yeah, we have a lot of different um, planets and, and a lot of different things happening. So I'm going to just dive into the deep end. As people are joining, make sure that you comment below. I love hearing from you guys. Um, yeah, so, oh boy. So we have uh, a bunch of things happening. So let's talk about last week. I mean, last week was kind of crazy. We had Lilith moved into Virgo. Um, we had the south node of the moon, which uh, which um, highlighted and conjuncted the, um, I know, I know, Amir. Amir said, oh, friend, you are not kidding about that horrible Pluto and Mars arrangement. I know, I know. Um, this Mars formed a, uh, an opposition with the north node of the moon and then formed a conjunction with the south node of the moon. And we're going to talk about that in just a moment uh, because that was, that's sort of, basically what's kind of going on behind the scenes. This is the week, unfortunately, after um, the big start of the Israeli war and the attack upon the, uh, uh, Israel. And, you know, I just, I can't even, it's just that my heart's go out to everybody um, involved with that. And Wendy, uh, hello, Wendy Aquarius from Vermont, welcome. Um, Julia, yay, welcome. Uh, yeah, so we have a lot going on. And and that Mars square Pluto thing on Sunday, which it, yes, it was Sunday, but it was really active for most of last week. And it still is active now, although now it's on the descent. Okay. And we're like coming down off of the, the top of the mountain on Monday, but yesterday, just, just on Sunday, October 8th was that, um, uh, Mars forming a square of Pluto. And that's really the rise of violence. I mean, even here in Vermont, there was a, uh, a murder that took place, um, uh, outside of Castleton College, which is very, um, unusual and, and 
again, prayers go out to the people involved with that. So there's a lot of things going on right now. And and Mars square Pluto does tend to bring violence to our planet. It just does. I mean, every time that happens, there's usually like, God forbid, school shootings and different things. There just usually is some kind of uprising and thing. So we, I, I brought the, the chart for Israel, and I'll be talking about that a little bit too, because I know you guys like to see some charts as well. Melinda, hello. Uh, Williston, Vermont, welcome. Uh, Sun and Capricorn, yay, love that. Okay, so I'm going to talk first about what's going on with Lilith and and Venus and Saturn so because they're all connected okay so it's going to be going over a, a few days and so this whole week really is going to be involved with this all this stuff so on Monday the 9th and you know I like to give you the exact pinpointed dates and times for those of you who take notes I know people some people take notes during the show um, and then also just, you know, just to know that these are the days, if you don't take notes, it's fine. Um, Monday on October 9th, uh, Venus formed a conjunction with Lilith at 4.57 p.m. Eastern time, and that was the peak of it. But remember, conjunctions don't just, you know, come and go within that day. So, um, so that's a pinpoint, that's one that, uh, is, is going to be active for a few days and we were feeling that over the weekend and Lilith is dark Venus is our love life so this is affecting our love and our, our finances Venus um, and then overnight tonight between Monday and Tuesday depending on if you're on east or west coast at 2 11 a.m eastern time so what is that 11 11 p.m on the west coast Venus and uh, is going to form an opposition to Saturn so Venus and Lilith are hanging out and then Venus is opposing Saturn. And then on Thursday, Lilith opposes Saturn. And just to give you an idea, because Lilith is a longer transit than Venus, um, this is going to be active. This, this Lilith opposing Saturn thing is going to be active all the way from October 6th, all the way until October 18th is, is going to be active. And the pinpoint the peak of it, the height of it, the pinnacle of it, the when it's the absolute peak strongest time is is going to be just after midnight on Thursday, October 12th at 12.07 a.m. Eastern time. So we have those three plant three and basically what it is just to just to make it really easy, Lilith and Venus together. They're both opposing Saturn on the other side. And so and this active this whole week. So <laughs> Lilith is this wild untamed beast like seductress okay and she's like don't tell me what to do she's very um independent and she's very um uh you know fiery and feisty and then she's partnering with with venus now these are both in virgo and they're both going to oppose saturn retrograde in pisces so when even when even when venus opposes saturn just like let's leave lilith out of this that's going to make us feel possibly lonely, possibly isolated, possibly feeling a little like, you know, that there's a, you know, little, little stuff going on behind the scenes. We might not be feeling the love, you know, Saturn, Saturn is a little bit more, um, kind of Saturn can set up challenges with love. Like people who have Venus and Saturn hanging out in their chart together, they're usually people who believe they have to earn love. Okay, like love isn't given freely, it doesn't flow freely, and you have to earn the love, okay? So this week, we might be feeling that. Our partner might seem cold or distant, or if you're single, you might think, wow, I'm never going to get anybody, you know, kind of thing. Like, it, you know, but it's not true. Don't listen to those thoughts. Um, Andrea, ding, 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 100 stars. Thank you so much. By the way, if anybody wants to give stars, it's greatly appreciated. There, this is a little financial tip for the broadcast, but it makes me feel good. <laughs> Love those stars. Hey, Gloria from, um, I don't know where that is, Florida. I don't know how to pronounce that. Asala. I'm not sure how you say that, but Cancer from Florida. Welcome. Okay. So, 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 and then you get Lilith involved and Lilith is dark thoughts. 
So we're already feeling kind of dark because of Saturn. Saturn doesn't make us feel very good sometimes. Saturn's constriction, restriction, feeling um, feeling left out, feeling like like maybe maybe our love is a burden or like you know that we have to feel like an obligation or a duty to our partner because Saturn is work. Oh boy, a whole bunch of stars! Yay, <laughs> Juliet, hundred stars, and Kelly, fifty stars. Thank you so much, everybody. <laughs> you guys are awesome. Hey, Sylvia from uh, Upstate New York and Gemini, welcome. Um, so, so just having this, this Venus and this Saturn, and 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 kind of feeling lonely, isolated, and and then just like we can't move ahead in our love life, or or that love is a duty or an obligation, which is not very fun or sexy if you think about it. Um, and then and then Venus is in Virgo anyway, which is kind of worky or. Um, sort of more analytical and more practical, we might not be feeling the love this week. I mean, this might be one of those weeks. So the reason why I'm telling you this is because, you know, if you have a partner, you might not want to just throw the baby out of the bathwater there. I mean, unless if you've been having a long standing problem, if you've been having a problem all along, uh, then, you know, this might bring it up. And this could be a make or make it or break it time during these things because it's like a stress test. But if, if, if everything's going well, your partner might be busy or might be needing to work a lot or might need to go take care of an elderly parent or something that is taking the love away, you know, kind of and making it a little harder to access. That's all. Um, so it won't be a big deal. Uh, this happens once every roughly year or so, at least with Venus and Saturn. Now, Lilith and Saturn is a whole different thing. It's like every nine years uh, where she's opposing Saturn and that's a bigger deal. Um, but just with Venus and Saturn, this could be just, you know, one of those times where we're not just, we're just not feeling it. Uh, and so that's okay. Just hang with it. You know, like, again, if your relationship is fine otherwise, and then just this week you hit a big, you know, a speed bump or something, or you get a little argument or something happening, or your partner doesn't seem to be very responsive to you or, or vice versa. Maybe you feel a little cold and chilly and you're the one that's that's pulling away. It's okay. We all need a break. We all need to pull away. Sometimes we all need space and distance and time and things like that. Um, and so it's just something that, uh, that is going to be active this week. And then with Lilith involved, we now see Lilith functions very much like, um, Pluto. There can be jealousies. She's a little bit more raw and raunchy. Okay. With Lilith, you know, we can be jealous. We can be possessive. We can be intense. We can be obsessive. We can be all those, all those things. And again, that's coming in Virgo. We're looking at the fine details. We're looking at all the little, the little fine print. And so with her opposing Saturn like that, you know, Saturn is rules and Lilith doesn't like rules. I mean, I don't know if anybody knows about that mythology, but she's, she doesn't like the rules. I mean, she, the mythology is that she was the original Eve in the Adam and Eve situation. And then she was kicked out for being too sexy of the garden. And then Eve came in and replaced her. That's basically the mythology of Lilith. So with Lilith being part of that whole thing, she doesn't like being told what to do because somebody was telling her, Hey, calm, calm it down, <laughs> button up your shirt, look a little more presentable. And she was like, Oh yeah. You know, and she was, <laughs> she was wild. So so she doesn't like rules and Saturn is the rules. So there could be a little issue with that this week. Um, there could be some problems. Uh, so that's again, active. If you're just joining a bunch of people, just join the broadcast. Hey, Sarah, welcome. Sarah from Vermont, Leo, welcome. Um, that we have so many things going on this week. I don't want to spend too much time, but just know she is active. She's affecting our love life. And the last, the other, I just want to say one quick thing about that. And then I'm going to move on. Um, Venus conjunct Lilith has been going on for a while now. So, so because remember Venus was retrograde back in the summer. So on June 28th, Lilith and Venus were, were conjunct in Leo. And then on August 7th, Lilith and Venus were conjunct in Leo. And now they're conjunct for the third and last time this year. And that is in Virgo. So this is the first time they've been in Virgo together. But she, Lilith and Venus have been hanging out for the last few months. And so, hmm, they've been kind of like doing one of these. They, they've been kind of like hovering around each other. So they haven't been very far away from each other. And that's been making us kind of like having these like sort of, hmm, 
things with love, you know, and people have been having, uh, I've been having a lot of clients talking to me about love and, you know, things like that. So, so trouble in relationships she can bring, but she can bring sexy, sexy too. I mean, she's just wild and unpredictable. So whatever she brings, she tends to have like a darker influence sometimes. So, so that is happening. And again, it's kind of rare ish for her to be doing this. That only happens roughly once every nine years or so, give or take a little. So, uh, so yeah, this is kind of a big deal, but we are going to move on after this week. She's going to finally be Venus and her are going to finally really be separating for good. And that, that'll be a good thing. She's still in Virgo. So we have to put up with her for the next until the end of June. She'll be in Virgo. So we still have to put up with Lilith for a while. Now, speaking of Pluto type, <laughs> Lilith type things, Pluto is actually going direct. I have some good news. Yay! Okay, so Pluto Direct, October 10th on Tuesday at 9, 10 p.m. Eastern Time. Okay, Pluto is going direct, no longer retrograde. Okay, oops, I messed up my little flower here. Um, and that is a good thing. Now, we still have five planets retrograde. Five, five. Okay, so we can't get away from the retrogrades just yet. Okay, so it is, we have Jupiter retrograde, Saturn retrograde, Chiron retrograde, Uranus retrograde, and Neptune retrograde still. But that's a good thing. We have one retrograde off the plate. And if you guys remember the mythology of Pluto, Pluto was said in mythology to come up uh, above the earth when he's direct. And that's when all the you know, the leaves die and the plants die and everything. And we call that fall, right? And that's when everything starts to happen. And then winter comes, winter is coming, you know? So Pluto, it said Pluto is up above the earth walking around. And then, and then in the spring, he goes down underground and that's when all everything blooms and the tulips come out and all that. So, so that's the mythology behind Pluto. Now, Pluto is at the very, 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 very end of Capricorn, 27 degrees Capricorn, and it's going to start going stationary direct. So what that means, Pluto slows way down, stops. Again, it, it, it's an optical illusion I'm talking about, but that's what it's said to be retrograde, stops, and then goes forward. So just to give you a point of reference, because Pluto is one of the furthest planets out there, um, He's not even going to get to 28 degrees until November. Okay, so one degree, it's going to take him all that time to even just move forward. So that's why Pluto takes so long to get anywhere because, um, it, you know, he's so far away. But but at least he'll be direct and starting to head in a good uh, direct motion. And we will only have one other time um he'll eventually return to aquarius pretty soon and then next year we're gonna have one time of him going back to capricorn and then we're gonna be done with pluto and capricorn for many 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 years so uh it'll be interesting so we're at the very end of this capricorn and boy are we feeling it you know, Capricorn is government, business, structures, as far as, uh, you know, gov you know, the governmental, but also all of the rules, the regulations, all those things. That's very Capricornian. And with Pluto there, he's trying to tear everything down. And so that's happening in our, you know, country in the United States. We're in the middle of the United States Pluto return. Okay. And then it's also happening other areas of the world too, where we're seeing like governments and structures and things just being torn down. And there's nothing we can do about it, you know, you and I and the average person, but that's basically what's happening. I mean, if you think about the archetype of Phoenix rising, well, it has to burn to the ground, completely burn to the ground before it rises up again. Um, uh, I had pulled up the map of Hawaii. I left it on my desk still. It's still over there. Um, but I had the map of Hawaii where Pluto line was right there next to Hawaii. And, you know, literally Hawaii burnt down. I mean, you know, part of Hawaii anyway, burnt down. So we're looking at, you know, Pluto is, is that death and destruction kind of thing. And so with him going direct, who I don't know, but we've spent the last five months, Pluto's been retrograde since May 1st, 2023. So we spent the last five months reviewing where in our life things have been toxic, what we need to work on, what we need to clear, what we need to get rid of. It's almost like, um, almost like a full moon in some ways, you know, uh, and that's very Plutonian, you know. So now we're going to be taking what we learned since May, 
May 1st, and then we're going to be moving on with that knowledge. Now, next May, he's going to go retrograde again. He always goes retrograde for five months out of every year. So we're going to be reviewing these life lessons all the way until then. And so there you go. So Pluto Direct, we're now we're incorporating, we're infusing what we've learned. It depends really specifically where Pluto is in your astrological chart in order to know transiting Pluto, not, not the planet that lives there full time where you were born with it, but transiting Pluto, where is the end of Capricorn, 27, 28 degrees Capricorn, where is that in your chart? And you'll know how Pluto is affecting you. Um, and so, yeah, that's been happening. So I, we have one retrograde off the plate. Whew, okay. <laughs> um, now, Wednesday on October 11th, um, and if anybody wants to like this, bro like this, I should say, like this broadcast up, up this way, uh, share with your friends, tag a friend below, comment below if you have any thoughts, questions, ideas, anything about what I'm saying, uh, because that all helps the algorithm to roll and, and lets me know. I know you guys get quiet when you're really intensely listening, and I love that, um, but make sure you comment um, or whatever. Now, we do have another thing going on this week, which is on Wednesday, which is the sun opposing Chiron. The sun is in Libra, Chiron is in Aries. And so it's it's uh, coming at 4.22 a.m. Eastern time at on uh, October 11th, 2023 on Wednesday. And remember, we're feeling it right now just because it's peaking on Wednesday doesn't mean we're feeling it right now. We're going to feel it towards the end of the week as well. Now, oh my gosh, think about something that we need to heal. Chiron is our healing. Chiron is the wounded healer. And so now we have the sun opposing Chiron. The sun is our ego. It's our self. It's, it's, it's the, you know, everything revolves around the sun, right? We, if the sun dies, we all die. So, I mean, it's a big, important thing. And when the sun, we're, the sun is going to shine on and illuminate something that Chiron is sort of, and they're opposing each other. So it's maybe something our ego doesn't quite want to integrate, but Chiron's like, yes, we, you need to integrate that, <laughs> you know? So Chiron tends to bring up things from the past, uh, old wounds or something that we're trying to heal from child. A lot of childhood stuff is Chiron based. Um, it's in Aries, it's retrograde right now. So we're, we're, you know, in that retrograde Chiron time where we're looking at reviewing old wounds or old things. Now the sun is going to be, you know, kind of doing the full, almost like a full moon, right? Where they're opposite of each other. And so that's something that we need to look at as far as our healing, our personal healing. Now, Chiron is not just childhood wounds. It can be spiritual healing, emotional healing, and physical healing. Okay. So, uh, we remember we're in Libra season. Libra is the kidneys and the adrenal gland and the lower lumbar spine. Okay. And Aries is the head. Okay. Aries is also blood. Um, so Aries is anything to do with the head. So a lot of things are up here, like the brain and the eyes and the ears and all kinds of things. So, so Aries, um, and Chiron are opposing each other. And so we need to kind of look at that. And like I said, that's coming on Wednesday. Um, yeah, Ashley said she's having sinus issues. I'm an Aries. I always have sinus <laughs> issues. Cancel clear, but I do. It's just something that, um, yeah, so, so we need to heal. Yeah, you need to heal, right? Um, Ashley said she's healing from, uh, a cold or something. Everybody sent Ashley, uh, and lots of, uh, healing love and light. Hey, Hillary Capricorn. Thank you so much for your comment. You said, thank you for your wisdom. Um, I appreciate that. And so, and then on, on Thursday, we have something almost every day this week. So on Thursday, um, that is when the, on that's October 12th, that's when we have, you know, uh, Lilith is going to oppose Saturn and that's right after midnight. So really it's 9.07 PM on Wednesday night, if you're on the West coast and then East coast is 12.07 AM, uh, is that Lilith opposing, um, Saturn and we're going to feel that. So that's like where we don't want any rules, but someone's trying to mm, put a rule onto us and we're like, hell no, we don't want to have any rules. <laughs> So we have to kind of watch because we might have to find some middle ground there. Now, when it comes to Thursday, also, we have Mars going into Scorpio. Ooh, that's a hot, hot potato right there. <laughs> 
And that's another one that's right after midnight, 12.04 a.m. Eastern Time. So again, 9.04 p.m. if you're on the West Coast uh, on Wednesday night. Mars heads into Scorpio and Mars is going to be in Scorpio. Okay. For a couple, um, almost like the end of, uh, November. So it's going to be November 24th. Mars is going to be in Scorpio all the way until that time. Mars is moving pretty fast right now. Usually he's in, in each sign a little longer, but, um, Oh, ding, ding, ding. Thank you, Holly. Um, you get hundreds, a hundred stars. Thank you. I really appreciate you. Um, Juliet said, ha ha. Yep. <laughs> it's a hot potato right now. So Mars, Mars and Scorpio. Well, if you think about Mars, um, is the ruler of Aries, but back in the old days, before before uh, the invention of modern day telescopes, where we didn't even know anything about Pluto, um, the ancients used to use the ruling planet of Aries and um, Aries and Scorpio used to be uh, ruled by Mars. Um, now that we discovered Pluto. Scorpio now uses Pluto, but really we still can look at Aries and Scorpio as like sort of Plutonian kind of powered, or uh, uh, sorry, Mars powered, right? So, so Scorpio is um a ha like a ha like I should say a happy place, I guess, for Mars, but it's an intense place. I'll just say that. I mean, Scorpio's at home in Mars. I mean, it's not like it's a bad kind of it. Like, I'll just be honest. Libra in square in uh, Mars was a little weird because you know that's that's Mars is that opposite that's Aries opposite um sign is Libra and Aries so so for Libra to be in Mars is sort of odd or different or weird feeling um because you know if you think about assertiveness and and kind of being aggressive and all that uh that's not what Libra likes right Libra doesn't like that so that's where we're leaving. So where we're heading is getting into um, this, uh, this time with Mars going to be in Scorpio. And that's a little bit more potent, a little bit more powerful, a little bit more sizzly, a little bit more. Uh, okay. So we're going to be dealing with that. Um, you know, Scorpio tends to be the body part associated with our reproductive organs. Okay. So all the stuff, you know, um, that down there in that area and also how we void waste. Okay. So it can be bladder, anus, all that kind of stuff. So, um, whatever sex you are, doesn't matter. Um, it, it's that sort of area of the body and that's going to be all the way from October 12th until, uh, November 24th. Oh no, Melinda, you said you had a seizure. You, you had your, oh, oh no, you had a seizure last Saturday. Oh no, I'm so sorry. Can everybody please send Melinda a, uh, lots of love and light and good vibe. Um, she had had a previous stroke before and now she just had a seizure this weekend. So I'm so sorry. Yeah. Um, for those of you that don't know, my mother, um, fell. Okay. And she broke her leg and she is recovering, but you know, she's 76. And so she broke her leg. And, uh, so if any of you can send Rita, um, lots of love and light as well. And that also happened, uh, last week. And I really feel like that Mars Pluto square, um, has been just really activated right now. I mean, it's, uh, it's kind of stuff like this. It's a lot of inflammation, it's pain, it's blood sort of things. It's all kinds of stuff like that. So I'm really sorry, Melinda, we're going to send you lots of love and light Reiki. Thank you, Andrea. Um, anybody out there, if you're a Reiki master or a healing touch person, please, uh, send, uh, you know, people some energy there. Um, Melinda, Ashley Ann and Rita <laughs> that are that are usually watching our our broadcast here. My mom uh just got um out of the hospital today and she, they just sent her home so she can't join us tonight on the broadcast but uh yes, thank you Wendy sending lots of love and light to Melinda, Rita, Ashley Ann. Um and uh yeah, so when we look at Scorpio, the reason why we're sort of talking about pain and inflammation and all those types of things, blood blood things uh, is very scorpionic, um, as well as STDs, that other region like um, ovaries, fallopian tubes, uterus, uh, testicles, prostate, all those, all that whole, all that area, okay, is Scorpio. Now, Scorpio and Mars is kind of like a match made in heaven in some ways, because 
Uh, it is a sexy, sexy, that is very sexy. So we had a romance time with Mars in Libra. Um, we still are in Libra season, which is a little bit more about romance and a little bit more about um, the accoutrements, okay, the candles and the, and the flowers and all those. Now we're getting into, uh, we're starting, this is the first uh, time of Scorpio season and we're starting to have that flavor that passion and the desire and all the you know the good stuff and so mars is who we are sexually attracted to somebody had um made a had i can't remember exactly what the question was uh they had posted on youtube and by the way if you guys have any questions like you know general astrology you know if you ask me post on on the live show notes or posting it on youtube i will try to come back and answer those um Mars in our natal birth chart, whatever sign Mars is in in our natal birth chart is who we are sexually attracted to. Doesn't mean it's going to last. Doesn't mean it's, we're going to fall in love, but it is who we have the hots for, okay? And that's Mars. Okay, so with Mars and Scorpio, this is very, you know, very heated and very heavy. Now, this can be all the all the all the Scorpio stuff which can be um sort of putting our effort and energy towards the mystery and solving pro puzzles and solving, you know, kind of looking beneath the surface and wanting to see what's going on and all that stuff. A lot of Scorpios come to see me. They love tarot, numerology, astrology, psychology, all the stuff where you're like really trying to figure things out. And that's very Mars and Scorpio. There's also a connection to the afterlife with Mars and Scorpio too, as is with all Scorpio placements, um, where we're interested in, in that type of subject, um, uh, what goes on after we pass away and, and things like that. Um, but it is very sexy as well. And if you think about Scorpio being a very sexual sort of oriented sign, um, that's what Scorpios are sort of known for. That is all the stops. Now, again, this is raw passion. This is not like, you know, all the accoutrements though. I know a lot of Scorpios that are very also, romantic and passionate as well. So, um, so yeah, so that's going to be, we have a new Mars cycle. I definitely, when I think of Mars and Scorpio, I definitely think of red. I definitely think of the bloodstone, uh, stone that, that I, um, uh, have here. This has a little bit, it's hard to see on camera, has a little bit of red in it, um, red and green. Um, also red, if you think of any red stones, like a carnelian type of stone, that's definitely all the, you know, very passionate. I know a lot of, um, Mars and Scorpio clients, they can be very, <laughs> very passionate, but they can also be, whoa, when they are mad, whoo, you know, it's a little scary. I'll just say that. So, <laughs> um, so it's something to kind of keep in mind because Scorpio, all the dark st stuff of Scorpio's revenge and all that can be activated in Mars. But remember, Mars is just energy. Mars is, Mars is how we act, our motivation, our drive, our ambition. And so even though we're going to be having a motivation and drive and ambition towards those things, uh, doesn't mean they have to be dark. Uh, but if somebody, makes us mad during that time. That's kind of where it'll go, you know? I mean, so that's, that's not a fun thing. Um, <laughs> yes, Ashley Ann, you said as a serious Sagittarius, that's why you love Scorpio's philosophical conversations and seeking truth and mysteries. I love that. Um, that's wonderful. Uh, Wendy said, data Scorpio, very passionate in all areas of love and hate. Okay, there you go. You know, it's interesting because I, I often ask my clients that when we talk about relationship, um, uh, dating coaching and relationship coaching, which, which I do a lot of in my sessions, I am a, a dating and relationship coach. I'll ask people, um, what do you think the opposite of love is? What do you think the opposite of love is? Um, and most people will comment, uh, the opposite of love is hate. Nope. The opposite of love is apathy. It's, I don't care. Okay. That's the opposite of love. Um, indifference. Yes, exactly. Wendy, Wendy said it. Yep. Ding, ding. <laughs> Wendy got it. Um, Lauren, Lauren also said indifference. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You guys got it. <laughs> Both of you. Um, exactly. Like, it's just like you don't care anymore. But hate is an extreme form of caring. That's an extreme form of giving uh, two hoots, you know. Um, 
I always tell people if you're single and you're looking for a partner and and you're on, let's say, a dating app or something and the dating app, the person's like, I really hate my ex and, uh, da, 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 and they go on and on and on. Run. Don't walk. Run. Because that person still cares. Mm -hmm. Ding, ding. That person still cares, right? Um, so hate and obsession and jealousy and all that, that's all very Scorpionic, very Plut Pluto, which is the ruler of Scorpio nowadays, the new ruler of Scorpio. Um, but that's basically what the deal is. So this is all starting on Wednesday um, uh, as we go through... Uh, Still, we're in Libra season, but we're starting to get, we have the first planet there entering that Scorpionic area. So we're headed towards Scorpio season for sure. Now on Friday the 13th, hmm, Friday the 13th, yay, we have another Mars thing. Mars is going to form a trine. This is positive with Saturn, okay? This is coming at 829 a.m. Eastern time, Friday the 13th. Now, personally, I love Friday the 13th. That tends to be a good luck day for me. And the number 13 in Mayan culture and ancient civilization was considered to be very, very lucky. So I don't think that that's, you know, bad luck. I don't know where people came up with that, but I didn't look up the mythology of it, but... I feel like it's hooey balooey. I think the number 13 is actually a sacred number. Yes, Ashley Ann said, a god, the goddess day, exactly, Friday the 13th. But we have Mars forming a trine with Saturn. And Mars is now in Scorpio, and Saturn is still in Pisces, still retrograde, still in Pisces. Oh, I didn't know that that was um, goddess Freya day. Oh, that's interesting. I didn't know that. Um, it's patriarchy. Somebody said, yes, the, 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 um, yes, yes, exactly. That's awesome. Okay. So anyway, so Mars forming a trine with Saturn, uh, again, Scorpio and Pisces is getting activated. These are the water signs. So, okay. So, so I don't love it when Mars interacts at all with Pluto, which it did last weekend or, or Saturn, which is now this Friday. I don't love it when, even when it's a positive trine, it still is like they're interacting. So remember, Mars is like putting the foot on the gas pedal and Saturn is like putting the brake pedal on, okay? So we have, you know, these two are kind of weird together. Now, the good news is they're working together. A trine is positive and they are working together positively. So if you can harness the the positive side of this, it's about getting stuff done. I will tell you last weekend, I got tons of things done. I mean, I was on a mission. I, I felt that Mars energy, Mars hooking up with Pluto, even though it was a square and it wasn't positive. I, I was very energized and I got a lot of stuff done. I probably did too much. I mean, that's the, that's the kind of, you know, thing that happens when Mars is activated. It's doing too much. Okay. Stuff. Um, but this Mars thing going to farm a trying with Pluto is about getting stuff done. It's about making a list. It's about, um, uh, meeting our goals, our dreams, you know, trying to work towards things. Mars can give us plenty of energy in that department. Saturn's like, slow down Mars, you know, like, let's think about things, you know, but it's okay. Sometimes Mars is too impulsive and Mars needs to slow down. Okay. Mars, <laughs> you know, like I needed to probably slow down last weekend. Um, and so, and I didn't, and you know, it's fine. I'm, I'm okay. But I just like, I felt like I overdid it. So with Mars forming a trine with, with Saturn here, you know, this is a good thing that could help us to work on our goals, dreams, aspirations, all that. The peak of it, the height of it is 8.29 AM Eastern time. Um, so again, if earlier than that, 529 AM, if you're on the West coast, uh, or in between plus or minus, and then that's going to be on Friday the 13th. But here's the thing, the next day, so that's going to be caught up with this solar eclipse. Okay. So on Saturday, we have the big solar eclipse. It's called an annular eclipse, and it's basically the ring of fire eclipse. Um, this is going to be coming to a peak on, on Saturday the 14th at 1.55 p.m. Eastern Time. So earlier than that, again, if you're on the West Coast or in between. And it's going to be taking place at 21 degrees Libra. Where in your astrological chart is 21 degrees Libra? And that's going to be the sun and the moon are going to be in the same sign in Libra, 21 degrees. That's what happens during the new moon 
is the sun and moon are in the same sign, the full moon, they're opposite. So we have, uh, we are in eclipse season and we have two eclipses this month. This is the first and this is the big one. And then we have a secondary one, which is a partial eclipse. It's still, it's still an eclipse, but it's much more of a reduced eclipse, the second one. Um, and that's going to be a full moon partial lunar eclipse. And that's coming on October 28th. And that's going to be in the sign of Taurus, five degrees Taurus. So, um, and that's going to be on October 28th. The peak of that is going to be 424 PM Eastern time. But we're going to talk about this one first because we got to get through this one first, right? So we have, we have two eclipses and eclipses are very powerful. Now, new moon eclipses are about new beginnings. So it's like new moon on steroids. Okay. So, um, it's starting something new. It's, it's, right? But it's hitting the reset button because that's what eclipses are, right? It's hitting a reset button. It's like when you're using the computer and the computer gets wonky and you got to unplug it or you got to shut it down and do the reboot and fingers crossed that it comes back on. That's basically what the deal is with an eclipse. So it is said in a lot of practices that deal with magic, like Wiccan, paganism, whatever, that it's not really an ideal time to do magic because it's just too potent of energy. I don't care what you believe in it. I mean, I'm just giving you the sort of rules or regulations with this. Um, you usually what we would do is we would write our new moon manifestation list. Now, here's the thing. You can still write your new moon manifestation list. It will just be um, I would say maybe wait until the second chance new moon, the in between these two eclipses, which is coming on October 21st, the next Saturday. These are all on Saturdays, by the way. So next Saturday on the 21st in Capricorn, 28 degrees Capricorn. Ooh, that one's going to be rough um, on next Saturday because that one's going to be conjunct Pluto, right? 28 degrees Capricorn. Uh, we just can't seem to get away from Pluto. And on that day, the sun is going to form a square with Pluto. That one's rough. Um, even this one's kind of going to be wonky, um, uh, you know. But look, I always tell people this. I feel that magic, I feel that what are, whether you're talking about magic, whether you're talking about intentions, wh whatever you're talking about, law of attraction, it's all the vibe that you're giving it, okay? I, I'm not opposed personally to doing a new moon manifestation list on an eclipse. That's my personal feeling. But I know a lot of people say there's just way too much energy and it can be really wonky. And remember, these eclipses really do set us up for the next six months, okay, of time. These eclipses are very highly impactful in our chart. And I'm going to show you in just a moment um, the chart of Israel uh, to, to kind of drive this home. But the thing about this particular eclipse that is a little uh not sure if it's good or bad connotation is that uh first of all on that day on saturday mercury is going to oppose chiron so remember on wednesday the sun opposed chiron now mercury is opposing chiron so we have another thing we're healing okay so that's going to be with this eclipse and the moon the new moon okay the eclipse is going to be conjunct the south node of the moon south node of the moon which is our past, a past life, something from, from the recent past, something from past long ago. I mean, this is just too much. <laughs> this is so much. This All this energy right now is like really a lot. So remember to protect yourself. I think that's the big thing. Um, Almir said, I had the biggest changes in my life during eclipses. Exactly. Um, Ashley said, this Saturday, you bet. It's this Saturday. It's all the Saturdays what I'm talking about. October 14th, 2023. So the Ring of Fire, Fire Eclipse moon is going to be on top of the south node of the moon. Is I mean, I just, I don't know. I don't know. I'm not, I'm not in love with that. Because this war is started with with Mars being on the south node of the moon. Now we have the moon on the south node of the moon. I don't know. Um, south node, again, is one of those past life portal, right? Um, and so something is coming up that we have to review, and it's something that's linked to either our past or our past life, okay? So this is going to be, even though it's a new moon, right? You see how that's weird? Like, that's a weird bookend kind of thing, a new and an old, you know? I don't know. I feel like that energy is kind of... um. 
maybe like a little wonky. I don't know. And then the moon is also going to be conjunct Mercury during this and also opposing Chiron. This is a fully loaded, fully loaded new moon. I mean, I, I, it doesn't look pretty. It looks a little harsh. It looks a little ouchy. It's, <laughs> it doesn't look fun. Um, usually new moons, I'm like, yay, new moon. Let's write our, let's write our list and let's manifest and have fun. I don't know about this one. It looks angry. All right. So I, the reason why I'm talking about all this, I just wanted to show you guys. Um, I printed out and it'll be a little hard for you to see maybe somewhat on the camera, but I printed out um, the chart of Israel. And I wanted to sort of show you the inside circle here is Israel. And the outside circle is the day that they started getting attacked by Hamas. Okay. And I'm not here to talk about big political stuff, but I just wanted to show you what is really happening and why these things are so important. The eclipse, if you guys remember, there was a big eclipse on May 5th, okay, 5-5, um, five, five, and that one was 14 degrees Scorpio. So if you look at where the eclipse was, 14 degrees south node of the moon hit, hit Israel's south node of the moon in Scorpio. See, um, south node here is 13 degrees, the the full moon lunar eclipse, that was a full moon lunar eclipse, took place on May 5th at 14 degrees Scorpio. So you can see something's been brewing. Like whenever we have eclipses taking place that directly hit something in our charts, it's something's going to be set up for the next six months. So we're in that cycle. Six months from May is November. Okay. So we're right in the middle of that six month bubble with, with the, um, with this attack. And if you also see here, there's so much involvement here with, um, with Taurus. Okay. So if you look, um, we got the sun at 23 degrees Taurus, uh, that's Israel's sun. And then Uranus, okay, is also, I can't do it backwards, 21 degrees. Okay. So it's hitting the sun right here. You can see that. That's a surprise attack, right? Uranus is shocks out of nowhere, something unexpected. We have um, the north node of the moon, okay? Something that's here in, in our life now is, is uh, Jupiter. Jupiter is hitting the north node. So Jupiter just makes everything bigger, right? And there's that involved with that. So we have, we have a lot of energy, sort of Uranus, uh, Israel has a lot of energy with Uranus and Jupiter. We have this, we have this, um, eclipse, you know, old eclipse energy. So that's why I'm bringing that up, not to be political or not to talk about these things, but it's just to show you even, even remember how I'm always saying like the players, look at the players, even look at this, um, in Leo, like current, currently Venus and the North node of the moon. Okay. Uh, we're hitting, um, Mars here. So I, I'm sorry, not North node of the moon. This was I'm looking at this backwards, so it's a little hard. Venus is hitting Mars. So even though Venus is lovely and nice and all that, it's activating the god of war, which is Mars, in Israel's chart. So I wanted to say that when it comes to this particular ring of fire in Libra, 21 degrees Libra, eclipse, that this sets us up for the next six months in this particular way. And so does this partial eclipse coming later in the month. That also sets us up for another six months. So what I would say uh, is that I would have a lot of intentionality around positivity, around, you know, like setting your intentions, your goals for the future. Libra is supposed to be peaceful and, you know, looking for balance. But remember what I always say with Libra, and, and any of these signs, not just Libra, is that we're striving for that thing. It doesn't mean we have that thing. We're striving for that thing. So so when we look at this, um, all this energy, Chiron's involved, Mercury's involved, which means we're going to be talking. Chiron means we have to heal something. South node of the moon is going to be involved, which is something from the past. That just have awareness that, first of all, people are going to be struggling. Like I always say, whenever there's this much energy, I don't care what the energy is. If there's so many ener so much going on during this time, um, that there's been violence and there's like things going on in the news and 
you know, even stuff in your own home or family life or whatever, um, just know that people are struggling right now. People um, are getting pushed to the brink or put, it's like a stress test, a human stress test. Um, and a lot of times if people are struggling with addictions or with uh, mental illness or any kind of thing, um, especially with Libra, we're talking about relationships here and how we view romance. We need to have, we're hitting the reset button in the romance department. We're hitting the reset button in the balance department. We're hitting the reset button in the peace department. We're hitting the reset button in the justice department. You see, so this is like what we're doing with this, with this new moon. We have to reset something. And so it depends again, where it is, what it's hitting now. If you're in Aries, you're going to feel this as almost a full moon. Okay. Because this is opposing you. Um, so Aries and Libra are in the very heart of it. If you have any planets at near 21 degrees Libra, give or take 21 degrees Aries, give or take. Um, if you were born around this time and this is your birthday, you're going to be right in the heart of this. Um, also the other air signs will feel this, uh, Aquarius and Gemini's will, will definitely be feeling that, uh, the other cardinal signs will feel this. So Capricorn and Cancers as well. Okay. Because these are all leaders. <laughs> Aries is a leader and so is, um, Libra. So the leadership right now, all the leaders are stirred up right now. I'm telling you that right, right right now, all the leaders in the world. But are you a leader in your life? Okay. And this is time to sort of step in. Ashley Ann said your mom's birthday is October 13th. See, so she's going to be right in the heart of this. And this is hitting the reset button on something in her chart. So we have to definitely um, use this as a download and an opportunity, okay, to reset something. Sometimes, sometimes you just need a reset. I mean, we all do. Sometimes we just need to reset something. And with it being a new moon, there is a potential if we hit the reset button that we could, we could steer this ship in a new way. Um, if we have healing, if we have conversation, if we have leadership, if we have, uh, you know, something from the past getting resolved or brought up, or, you know, if something does come up from the past, either past life or recent past or, or past in, in your own lifetime, um, bring it up. Let's dust this off. Let's, let's figure this out. Let's not avoid it. Okay, that's what I would say is that if anything comes up, and I always say with eclipses, we have to pay attention. We're in the bubble of these eclipses. So we have to pay very strong attention to anything that happens this week and even getting into next week. And even as we get into this other eclipse coming, the second eclipse, because these are all things that are going to show you what you need to work on, your personal stuff that you have to work on and your personal stuff that you have to hit the reset button on. And I always say most of the time when we hit the reset button, the computer does come back on, but sometimes it doesn't. And if that's the case, if we hit the reset button on something and it's like not coming back online again and it doesn't seem, then we have to let it go. We have to release that. We have to purge that. We have to get rid of it. Um, but most of the time it does. I mean, most of the time that fixes the computer, right? Um, so this is about doing that. And uh, so it's like kind of like a, you know, like we're, uh, I don't want to say it's an ending, but it could be, I mean, but it's more like we're resetting, I think is, is a better sort of uh, way of looking at it. Now, remember, there's always eclipses and every single year you've been living through eclipses your whole entire lifetime. So this is not anything new. Um, it's just that if you're not aware of astrology and you've been living through these eclipses in your life and you've been doing it, uh, unconsciously or subconsciously, this would have been a time that, you know, stuff would have been brought up to you, would have been happening. And that's why I love astrology because it makes us very conscious of, uh, knowing what's going on and also gives us like a higher reasoning or a higher purpose for these things. Um, and that can help us too, I think, when we have a broader perspective, when we have a spiritual perspective on these things that it's not just random, life isn't just treating you unfairly or whatever thing it is that like we tell ourselves sometimes because we can tell ourselves things. Uh, the big thing with Libra is about standing up for yourself, believing in yourself, uh, not being codependent, not um, acquiescing constantly to people, please, and let other people walk all over us. And, you know, with, with Libra, yeah, we want to be in a partnership and partnerships and relationships are really very, very important, but not more important than yourself. 
you're the one that's the most important, really. You know, and that's that Chiron and Aries is going to be active and saying, you know, hello, you're important. You know, that's self-love. Chiron and Aries is all about self-love. So even though they're going to oppose each other during this full moon, or new moon, there's just so much going on during this new moon. It's just kind of crazy. But, um, and if you've noticed, even, even in my posts, um, I've been trying really hard every single day, you guys, to post a post on Instagram and Facebook. So please, if you can like those posts, uh, because it helps to keep me motivated because it's really, it takes me over an hour to do each one of those posts every single day, seven days a week. And I've been doing something like that for since 2009. So it's a little, sometimes I get a little like, this is a lot, <laughs> you know? Um, so I've been trying really hard to do them every day again, but I will tell you this, there's been so many and I I have a 2200 character count for for Instagram and they cut me off if I go over that. So I have to condense it and I've been having trouble. I like I've been having a lot of trouble writing these posts just because of so much going on. Um and so having the awareness that so much is going on again, a giving other people a break, okay? Somebody cuts you off, somebody's rude, somebody decides, "Hey, I'm going to tell you things that, you know, blah blah blah." Okay, giving them a break, but giving yourself a break, giving yourself a break is a big thing with all this because it's hard. You know, it's not fun stuff and it's a little bit of um, contentious energy and everybody's got something they're dealing with and we all tend to make us feel like, it makes us feel like, oh, like I'm being singled out or I'm, you know, something's happening to me. No, everybody right now is going through some something like this and even if, Let's say this hits an empty spot of your chart and it's not doing anything to your life, but maybe it's maybe it's affecting your spouse or maybe it's affecting your next door neighbor or maybe it's affecting, you know, your best friend or whoever, your parent or something, then it is going to affect your life because then it comes in the door or it comes through the phone or something. So we all have to deal with these energies, even if they're not really affecting you directly, you'll be, you'll be one of the lucky ones that gets to hold space for somebody else. If that's the case, you'll hold space for somebody else. And just remember, there might be a lot of that ding 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 Andrea thank you so much you sent me 100 stars I really appreciate that thank you um you guys are amazing so that is this week in astrology um it's a lot Sunday is a little more quiet but not much it's just a little more quiet but then we get into next week is next week much more uh, less busy no not really <laughs> next week is pretty busy too but the week of the 22nd and the 29th look a little less busy, okay? We do have that one more eclipse coming, but it's more of a minor eclipse versus this big major ring of fire. The ring of fire eclipse um, always gets a lot of press because it's so, you know, kind of uh, dramatic. Um, and that's awesome, but it's, remember the astrology is about the energy of these eclipses. So whether we can see the eclipse or not, they still affect us here on this earthly plane. And again, it's gonna be hitting us in Libra. So I would say for sure, Libra is all about partnerships. And I should say this, Libra is also creativity, it's fashion, it's, um, it's you know, our partnerships, our business partners. If we have a business partner, that's another thing. So we have to kind of really look at what do partners bring to us? What are we bringing to them? Um, uh, you know, are we being a good partner? Are they being something back to us? Yeah, I said balance earlier, justice, all that stuff. I mean, when we look at the justice system, oh my God, that's a hot mess. I don't even want to have open that. It's like, hi, here's my can of worms. <laughs> um, if we want to look at the United States justice system, oh my goodness. Oh, by the way, when, um, uh, McCarthy was, uh, was, was, I don't know what you call it, expelled, uh, from his position, Mars was going, if you look at the map, Mars was going over Washington DC at that time. So even we're getting affected by Mars. That was Mars and Libra went over that. So ousted. Yes, that's a good word. Andrea said, <laughs> um, but that was when, that was when Mars went over Washington. So, uh, there's a lot of unsettled energy, you know, even Mars and Libra, even though, uh, you know, Libra is supposedly all this balance and peacefulness. I think we forget that Libra's, you know, 
a cardinal sign, which is a badass, basically. I mean, that can be very strong, powerful energy with Libra. So I, I, I don't think, I think a lot of us, modern day astrologers have gone too far on the end of peace and loving. And it's like almost they describe Libra like little fuzzy bunnies. But I'm like, Really? You ever made a Libra mad? It's like a hurricane hit you, you know? They're like you're they're like the 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 cardinal leader of all the air signs. That thing's like a typhoon. You know, I mean, <laughs> you get hit with that, it's gonna be big. So yeah. So anyway, so we had a lot this week, okay? Um, now if anybody has any questions or anything you guys wanted to ask me, um, I'm gonna only do a couple of um of <laughs> uh answers that tonight because it's getting a little late um oh sarah you're having a procedure on thursday yeah i can totally look at that for you yay oh juliet you got the house yes you asked me that last week and i told juliet i felt yes good your love letter worked i love that yay that's awesome <laughs> yes sarah okay sarah let's look at your procedure See, so this is Sarah. This is a big sit hitting reset for you as well. Let me look at the. I want to use this other deck, Sarah, about your procedure. I can't give medical advice on, on, um, on this, but I can tell you like the cards that I'm getting, and I can also put you down for Reiki if you want to send me a text message. Uh, let's see for Sarah. Interesting. Um. It is saying to stay committed, okay? You had made a promise or you were maybe, I don't know if you thought of canceling or not, but it's saying stay committed to this procedure, stay committed to your healing. Um, there might've been something about this initially. This is the moon. So this is, a, you might be getting emotional about this procedure, um, but it's saying you're gonna be okay. Castle card, castle cards is one of the best, you know, cause it's like solid, steady, you're good. Um, so I do feel like as if, uh, this will be a good thing for you. It's saying that you're going to have to move, you know, move around and move your body. Okay. This is about your not moving your house, but moving your body. Um, and so, um, you know, you can't just lay in bed and convalesce, uh, you know, it's going to be like, they might get you up and, uh, you know, wanting to move around quickly, uh, after the procedure. But this is just saying to remember to move your body. And also when you start to recover, maybe like consider walking or exercising, obviously, if it's okay with your doctor's orders, but yeah, that would be good. But I think it looks good. I think it looks good. The castle card is an excellent card. So yeah. <laughs> Ashley Ann said your mom is a Libra and she can be really intense. Yeah, see, that's a thing. It is a thing. Wendy, oh no. Pull a card for your heat pump. I told you you were going to have stuff with that. All right, let's look. Let's see. Oh no. I got two cards that said no, but it is going to end up happening. Maybe not on that date, though. I'm sorry to say. I'm sorry to say, Wendy. Look at this. I was like, are they coming on November 4th? Meh, I don't know. <laughs> that card is the, is the I'm not sure card. Um, and then this is saying trusting lamb. We're not really trusting them, you know, at this point. But eventually, castle card came out again for you, Wendy. Um, uh Sarah and Wendy both got the castle card and that's a solid. Now I will say this, Wendy, if you, um, if you had a, if, it, if you had a small company, like a mom and pop shop that you were using, this could be also that you need to go with a bigger company. Uh, the castle card is like that. Um, oftentimes it's like at a big institution, like, you know, like if Sarah, if you're getting a procedure done, it could be at a bigger place, you know, or whatever, or, or it's been around for a long time or something like that. Um, but yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, Wendy, well, the, all of this Mars square Pluto, it's all been going on. Like, you can't look at it just by day by day, um, that it's all been going on and there's been a lot of contention, problems, issues, you know, stuff like that. Um, and and last Friday, Wendy, was October 6th, was the um, second chance uh, new moon, or was it, no, second chance full moon, okay, on that day in Cancer, which is home and family. Uh, so, <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, no. You already gave a big chunk of money. I do, do think it's going to happen. I think that they're just back. I don't know if they're backed up or if it's or if the part is back ordered or some. It feels like something is backed, like clogged up. It feels like um, like yeah, they can't get there or something. Yay. Sarah, well, that's good. Your older son's a Libra and a peacekeeper. Yeah, I mean, that's how Libras can be too. I mean, they really can be that way, but we always forget that they can also be the hurricane and the typhoon too. I mean, you know, so we have, I think that we've gone into like too much of the peace, you know, like we, like a lot of um, people paint Libras as being that all that way, but they're, you know, there, there are definitely um, Libras out there that are not, you know, we call it the shadow side, you know, everybody has a shadow side. Uh, Wendy said very backed up by seven other clients. Yeah. See, it's going to happen though. It's going to happen. I just don't think it's going to happen on that date. Sorry. All right. All right. So I'm going to pull a card. What do we need? What do we need to know about? Oh my gosh. So remember we have the triple, the trifecta, Lilith and Venus and Saturn. Oh my. Okay. Um, yeah, <laughs> uh, we have Lilith, Lilith, Venus and Saturn. Okay. We, this week we have Mars going into, um, Scorpio this week. We have the sun and Mercury opposing Chiron this week. We have the total or the annular solar eclipse new moon this week. It's a lot. We have a lot. We have a lot. We have a lot. It's a lot. So let, what do we need to know on this earthly plane? What are the, our spirit guides, our guardians, the angels? What do we need to know about these types of energies that are coming here? All right. So this card looks scary, but it's actually the card of patience. And then we have the magician, patience and the magician. Okay. Patience means if you're waiting to take your foot off the gas pedal, to be more gracious, to be patient. And then good news is magician means you have everything you need. Magician is an affirmative card. It means if you want to, you know, whatever kind of you want to do, it means that you have the tools, the energy, the time, the resources, whatever. But it means that you have to have patience before you can implement the change. Okay. Uh, this card is about skipping steps. The name of the card is Sacrifice Victim, and it does look like she's ah, stabbing something here. But really, it's about sacrificing something in the process. So if you have to go A, B, and C, and you try to skip B and just go A to C, it means that you're going to sacrifice something if you go too fast or if you try too hard to skip ahead um, and if you don't do all the steps. And especially since Saturn Saturn is very active this week with Mars is going to form a trine with Saturn. We got the other ones opposing Saturn. Um, so Saturn's going to want us to slow down. Slow down, you know. <laughs> <laughs> take it easy. Okay. So that is basically what's going on. I just feel guided, um, to pull another card. This is more of like going to be, let's see what else just so to make it very clear. Cause sometimes we need clarity angels. I'll talk to my angels like that too. When I'm pulling cards, I'll say, Hey, I don't understand that last one. So give it, give me a clarification one. And they will. What do we need to know? Yeah. Oh, have faith, have faith. You know, I love this card because he or she is at the door, you know, go about to go into a new, you know, and that's that new moon solar eclipse, you know, we're hitting the reset button and he or she is up here. It looks like, Oh, it looks like nothing's behind there, but you have to have faith, um, that everything is going to be okay. And that you're going to be able to do those things. So, so I love this. I love this. Everything, anything that we do with faith, in God, Buddha, the universe, um, whoever you pray to Krishna, you know, Allah, whoever, whoever you pray to, um, uh, or even just faith in yourself. 
if you don't believe, let's say you're agnostic or let's say you're atheist and you, you know, how about you believe in yourself, you know, have faith in yourself. Okay. All right, everybody. This is a lot. It's a lot. So please be patient with yourself. Have faith in yourself. Be kind to yourself and be kind to your neighbors. Have patience with your neighbors and, you know, and we will be okay. All right, everybody. If you want to have a personalized astrological session with me, please feel free to send me a direct message. Also, please make sure if you haven't subscribed yet to my YouTube channel, thank you if you already have. And I really would appreciate it because that's what um, I'm, I'm still, I'm still going for the thousand subscribers. So thank you everybody so much. Lots of love to you. Mwah. Namaste and take care.